part of the basement was flooded, and the stairs had collapsed. I didn't know what was going on, but I knew I wanted to get back upstairs. The gate was locked. I would need a key to open it. How long had I been asleep? Months? Years? I was so confused. Where had everybody gone? I was slightly scared. This was the first time I had been outside on my own. I had to do, this had to be my purpose. I would clean a million things, so I could become a real boy. Whatever that meant. The screaming was coming from one of the bedrooms, but the stairs were blocked by a wall of fire.
people screaming turned out to be a man, a woman, and their children. They were confused and terrified. At first the man looked like he was ready to fight me, but after I convinced them that I was there to help, he calmed down. There was no way I could carry them all at once, so the children went first. I dropped the children off at the front door, and promised them that I would be back with their parents. The fire was getting much worse. So the woman went next. When we got to the front door, all the woman said was, Thank you. Please hurry. By the time I managed to get back, the man was unconscious. I had to pick him up quickly, as I could tell the house was going to collapse at any moment. helped the family set up a tent so they had somewhere to stay. The kids were excited as they got to camp outside, but I think they knew they had just lost their home. When I mentioned my quest to clean a million things, the man said I should look through the rubble of the house, as they had no use for it. So, when everyone was making dinner, I looked through the wreckage. There wasn't anything I could clean. But to my astonishment, I found a TV set and a games console. With a bit of fiddling I was able to get them to work. So I sat playing games with the kids until their parents said it was bedtime. As we talked, the man opened a bottle of wine. I asked what had happened, why was everything so ruined? The man looked at the woman, then the woman sighed and said, There was a war. Yes. A war said the man. One side of the planet attacked the other, and before we knew, it was all over. Everything gone. Everything destroyed. Well, it's late, said the woman. We should really get some sleep. Help yourself to anything you need, and we'll see you tomorrow.
In the morning, I asked the man if he knew what had caused the fire that had destroyed their house. The man smiled, crap old house, bad wiring, constant electrical surges from the unreliable power plant, take your pick. He said, if we had the money, we'd move to the mainland. But we can barely feed ourselves, let alone buy a new house, so for now we're left here with the rest of the scum. But he did say I should head to the mainland, as there would be plenty there for me to clean, and a better quality of rubbish. The man said, before the war, my lovely wife used to be a fisherman. Fisherwoman? Fishing person? I used to catch fish, interrupted the woman, and, seeing as you saved us all from the fiery end, maybe you would like to borrow my boat to get to the mainland. I was a little scared, but then they gave me some captain software and I was an old salty sea dog within minutes. I took the fisherman's boat to the mainland. The fisherman was right. Everything was in pieces. Everything had been destroyed. I docked the boat in some ruins. They must have once been a town. I was confronted by a lovable fat old dog. He almost looked pleased to see me. Suddenly, three men appeared holding large guns. Or at least two men and what looked to be a pregnant woman. Incredibly, it was Mr. Silton. I thought you'd been shut down, he said. I mean, it's been years. I'm not really sure what happened, I replied. I then told him about me cleaning a million things. He laughed and said, nothing changes. He then showed me into what was surprisingly a really nice house. Please excuse my husband, said the pregnant lady. I'm Edwina. But everyone calls me Eddie. I believe you know this idiot. And that's Preston. We've met. Said the small man, it was me that delivered that thing remember? All you used to deliver was weed, mumbled Mr. Silton as he put the dog dish on the floor. And, I was there that night, when this twat was off his face on mushrooms. Thanks for letting me and the dog stay, by the way. Yeah, well, we like the dog, said Mrs. Silton. And I suppose I've got you to thank for us meeting. What with you giving Barry those dodgy magic mushrooms? She pulled out an old photograph, it was one that Heather had taken the night I had saved Mr. Silton.
It reminded me of everyone else, so I asked what had happened to them. Mr. Silton said Alice had a small place in the countryside. The professor had holed up in one of the old man's factories. Mr. Deck was, believe it or not, now a presenter on the only state television channel. And Heather and her mother lived on a government compound where they both worked. I asked about the old man, surprised that Mr. Silton hadn't mentioned him. He's... he's dead said Mr. Silton. Sorry, I thought you knew. Anyway, said Mr. Preston, I thought you said that robot thing found the mushrooms for you, in that order's manky old barn. Mr. Silton looked embarrassed. Well, said Mrs. Silton, I guess we've got you to thank for getting us together then. Time for bed I think, said Mr. Silton, make yourself comfy, and we'll see you in the morning. The next day, I thought it might be a good time to ask about the war. Judging by the look on everyone's faces, it wasn't. Well, the war, said Mr. Silton. Barry, interrupted his wife, can I see you for a minute? And dragged Mr. Silton out of the room, leaving me with Mr. Preston. All of a sudden, Mr. Silton appeared. How about a tune-up, he said. Mrs. Silton started to make some food, and Mr. Preston was playing with the dog. <coughs> Leaving me to chat with Mr. Silton, I said that I really wanted to see everyone else, but Mr. Silton said that it wouldn't be that easy. Traveling now, especially for a robot, is complicated. Go back to the house, you could even do some cleaning. Wait there and I'll work out a way to get you to each of them. I told him that I couldn't get into the main house because the hallway ceiling had collapsed. I have just the thing, said Mr. Silton, as he pulled some sort of card out of his pocket. If you can get into the caves under the house, you can use this security pass to get into the old man's laboratories. You can get into the main house that way. I was so excited, I would be able to get back into my old room, I said thanks, and made my way to the front door. Also, I think you might be able to help us out, said Mr. Silton, but we'll meet up back at the old man's house in a couple of days, you head there and we'll see you soon. I wasn't sure what to do with this machine. The huge door was sealed shut. I wasn't sure how to get inside.
I took the fisherman's boat to the old man's estate. The gate was locked. I would need a key to open it. I had to be careful, the electricity was going haywire in some places. The gate was locked. I would need a key to open it. The gate was locked. I would need a key to open it. I was surprised to see an old man, but not as surprised as he was. It turned out he was blind. He was kneeling on the floor with his hand in a drain. When I asked him what he was doing, he said his cat had crawled into the pipes, and he was trying to get her out. He was very happy when I offered to help, he said there was no way we could reach her from here so if I was willing, I could make my way through the sewers and get her from the other end. He said he would turn off the water for as long as possible, but I would have to run, as the pipes would soon fill up again.
I happily agreed. So he gave me a key. He said this will open all the sewer gates. Go through here, then down the ladder, and through the big door at the bottom. I better run. <laughs> I found the old man's cat. She was fine, if a little confused. I was horrified. It looked like me. But it shambled around like something from the film we watched on Halloween. The man was happy to have his cat back, he looked so content with her sat on his lap. I told him about the thing I saw, but he just laughed and said, those bastard robots, they're always getting up through the pipes. Don't worry though, it'll never get through the big doors. If I had my way, we'd have blown up the lot of them when we had the chance. I wasn't sure what he meant. But I decided now wouldn't be the best time to tell him I was a robot. The man laughed. And said, don't worry, I know who you are. And told me that he knew the old man. As we chatted, the man brewed himself some tea. He said that he had worked for the old man. In fact he had lost his sight in one of the old man's factories. Strangely, he smiled at this thought. He always did me right, he said. When I had my accident, the old man said he would look after me. And he did. He always made sure I had enough money, and he let me move into this old pumping station on his land. Which reminds me, I have something here for you. He rummaged around behind a cupboard. Then he continued saying, the old man wanted you to have this when you were old enough, but fate wouldn't allow it. He passed me a large box. It was empty. I thought about pretending to be excited, but the man said, wait a minute, it's empty isn't it? He slumped back in his chair. I was robbed a few months ago, he said, almost in a whisper. It's strange, they took practically anything metal, but left loads of food and a brand new saxophone. The man looked sad, so I thought I would try to change the subject. I told him about my quest, to clean a million things. This at least made him smile. He said I was welcome to go back through the pipes anytime I wanted, as there were loads of old things in there that could be cleaned away. As I walked through the old church ruins, I was surprised to hear Mr. Silton calling me. 
He said he had forgotten to give me something, and the church's community hall would be the perfect place to try it out. As soon as we walked into the hall, Mr. Silton said he had a present for me. It was a pair of atlas gloves. They made me think of the old blind man with the cat, and his stolen atlas gloves. I wonder if Mr. Silton knew how lucky he was to still have them with a glove thief around. Mr. Silton asked me to try the gloves on, and start chucking things around. But not him. He was very clear about that. Mr. Silton suggested we clean the hall. Of course I knew when he said we, he meant me. But I was happy to try out my new gloves. He said I should clear everything off of the basketball court and put the things on the floor either side. I fiddled with the settings for a bit, but when Mr. Silton saw I was having trouble, he fished a small manual out of the box. He explained that pressing down and X would pick a thing up. X would then throw the thing, and if I wanted to place it on the floor, I should again press down and X. He looked more and more confused as he read all this, but eventually he finished by saying, Well, I hope that made more sense to you than it did to me. Let's see what else these gloves can do, said Mr. Silton as he flicked through the manual. He actually looked quite excited when he explained that holding X while walking into or under a falling thing would allow me to catch it. I must admit, I was then really happy when he suggested we make it a game and I try to catch 10 basketballs.
next Mr. Siltrant suggested we make it a real game and see how quickly I could score 10 baskets. I enjoyed this so much. It felt just like the good old days. Except Mr. Silton wasn't as forgiving as the old man. When I'd scored 10 baskets, Mr. Silton gave me what he called a high five. He said I now knew everything about the gloves and I should be able to continue through the basement of the church into the house. When I asked him if he was coming with me, he just laughed and said they would catch up with me in the main hall. Thank <laughs> you. 